This is Dave. This is the Not So Ancient Chinese Secret Show, where we talk about photo, video, live streaming, family and faith, as well as food and fitness. And today we're going to talk and nerd out a little bit about one of my favorite things, which is da -da -da -da, video and gimbals. And what do gimbals do? They keep your footage cinema buttery smooth, even when you're rocking and rolling. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, cool. So I did a review of a Feotech WGS, which is the previous generation's model of this for the GoPro session and GoPro Hero 5 session. Now, I wasn't totally in love with it, and anybody who watched that review, I've got links down below to everything, um, knows that there were some gripes that made me really frustrated, even right out of the box, okay? Now, I reached out to Feotech and asked them, yo, WG2 is out. Would you like to send me one and I can test it out? And they were so kind to send me one. And so um, just for full, full disclosure, they sent me this gratis, but I will be saying some bad things about it. And so please, Feotech, don't hate me. <laughs> okay, first off, let's talk. What is this beast? Oh, and by the way, We'll be looking at some websites right now, and so I can't see the comments, but I promise to get back to you. Oh, wait. Wait. Announcements first. Join me tomorrow. I'm going to have a special friend, Alexa. Alexa, play the chicken dance. That was for you, Tim Wan. Okay, anyways. But <laughs> um, I can't see your comments right away, but I will get back to you. I promise. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Okay. Now that we've got that out of, way, out of the way, let's talk about this gimbal. And so this is an amazing piece of engineering. And let's talk about what they claim it can do for us, okay? So the first biggie compared to the older version of any of these gimbals is that this is actually waterproof. Now that is a little shocking in and of itself, um, and it actually kind of matches the time. Like, I'm not sure if Feotech is kind of in cahoots with GoPro because now the GoPro Hero 5 and the Hero 5 Session are waterproof without a casing. And that means we can take it anywhere and not worry about, you know, oh, sand, dirt, grime, and water. Okay, now, Feotech released the WG-2. And I had no idea that the WG-2 could not only fit the Hero 5 Black, or the Hero 4 Black, but it can also, with an additional mount that they include, fit the Session and the Hero 5 Session. And so, me, silly, I was waiting around for them to release a new WGS update that was also waterproof, which they never released, because, unbeknownst to me, this one gimbal will fit many different action cameras. And so, even if you're not a GoPro user, there are other action cameras that are similarly shaped and sized that will actually fit. As long as it's under 130 grams, it may work with this beast as long as you can mount it onto itself. Okay, so waterproofness, awesome! So out of the box, I'm not really worried about dirt, grime, as well as splashing this with water. And they are, I'm going to talk about this a little bit, and one of my pet peeves is the waterproofness. And it is waterproof, but mostly with fresh water. So if you're into saltwater sports, be forewarned. You probably want to be careful with this beast, okay? Now, the other thing is that they do have unlimited axes movement in rotation, round and round and round we go, and in the tilting up and down. But, as we'll note, that you still have a very limited roll access, okay? It'll still knock, ooh, knocky, ooh, ooh, knocky, over there, okay? So, still some limitations, and, um, but you know what? Pretty impressive for what it is. Um, the knob with sliding arm, which they, is this thing allows you to fit more of the different action cams. We've already talked about this. And they have a new mode. And if you press the button four times, and we're going to go into how to use this thing. It's pretty simple. There's only one button. Um, and it allows you to let it auto pan very slowly over time so you can get time lapses. And so I've played with that a little bit, but, you know, it's kind of cool. Nice new feature. Um, they also have, uh, what is this? Oh, bottom and back brackets. We're going to talk more about this too. This is where it shines. They have improved this thing so much over the previous generation. It feels like it should be like two or three generations ahead of the last one. So very impressive. Okay, now, remote. Don't buy the remote, because guess what? There is now an app. And I have iPhone. I'm an iPhone user. Even an old iPhone 5 works with the app, and it works flawlessly. It is so well done. So, um, 
I also checked out and griped about in the previous generation that they said, you know, check for firmware updates on the website. And when I went there, there was nothing. It was like crickets and I couldn't even find a download. Well, good news, they've updated their website and it's really easy to find downloads as well as firmware updates. And even the instruction manuals you can download very easily on their website. So kudos to Feotech for improving on the support side. Now, this is what I did not know. All you need to do is change this little bracket thingy and then it fits a Hero session. I thought this was just for the Hero Black, Hero 5 Black and the Hero 4 Black, but um, it's so cool because this one gimbal works with all of the current and even the previous generations of GoPro. So, ah, perfecto. Even if you change your mind, buy a different gimbal, or hopefully in the future, you know, GoPro keeps a similar form factor, this will work for you. Very nice. Now, they also include in, improve the uh, build quality quite a bit. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but yeah, let us get to work. But first of all, a little video that I made with my boys splashing around Sylvan Lake. <laughs> about this tiny little GoPro is that it's so easy to carry around anywhere. And that wasn't art, but that was just living life. And because it only weighs like 0.75 pounds, including the GoPro, this is not painful to carry with you anywhere. Like I wasn't about to bring my big DSLRs out. I wasn't about to bring even um, uh, uh, my point and shoot out because I'm in water, right? Water. And this guy has literally, while shooting a wedding in Dominican, dipped with an ocean wave coming up, a DSLR in water. Yes, it was a very sad day. And I have kept that salt encrusted camera as a reminder of my stupidity. But that being said, if I had a GoPro back then, that would have been kind of nice. I wouldn't have to worry about splashing and waves and, you know, just be more free in creating and capturing. Ta da! Okay. Now let's talk about what's new and improved, which is actually quite a bit. So again, this is a pretty long list compared to the previous generation of the WGS version that I played with and did a full review of. Now, first thing is first, it is waterproof. Is that not awesome? There are motors in here. There's actually three motors in here and it is waterproof. How do they do it? I do not know. Anyways, it is. Now the other thing is build quality, everything has been improved. If you take a look at this side here, you can tell that that's rubberized. The metal, it's even better. Um, the um, They have a little, I don't know if you can see this here, but when you roll to the side, it knocks on this, right? It always has, but now what they've done is added a rubber pad on this bottom area here. So when your camera or the itself hits itself, it doesn't clink and make a loud sound. You're still gonna feel a weird vibration in the motor as it tries to overcorrect or correct itself, but um, really nice as far as the machining and definitely a huge step up. Like all of this is rubberized as well. And so the grip of it when you're holding the actual unit is actually really nice, much better than the blank metal of prior years. Now, the other thing is that they have improved the mounting points. And with the previous generation, one of my big gripes was that the, even the camera mounting points, the quarter inch 20 on the bottom and the back, they were too shallow. And so you would put a standard ball head on and it wouldn't fit. There'd be a gap between the ball head and your, your uh, gimbal, which was kind of silly, right? That kind of defeats the purpose of stabilizing it, right? Well, they fixed it. actually a good depth and they fit all of my ball heads that I have. Kudos. Now, one thing I should note is that in the previous generation, they did include T mounting clamps for to put this onto any GoPro mount. They don't include that anymore, but I haven't missed them. Honestly, I'd rather use this with the quarter inch 20 mount because they're stronger, more available, and I already have a whole bunch of camera gear. Works for me. Okay. Now, the, it is also 
more compatible. We already talked about that, not only with GoPro, but also other manufacturers of action cameras. If it has a similar size and is under 130 grams and shape, then it may fit. And this would be one gimbal that fits a lot more action cameras than any previous generation. Cool. Now, there is also that new auto rotation mode I talked about. We'll get to that in a little bit more, but also the iPhone app is just Awesome, so easy to use, and it works on old generation iPhones, even my iPhone 5, which is now almost five years old. Now, uh, I talked about the website, and they also have the firmware updates available there. Now, let's talk about some how to use this thing, and it's actually really simple. And so there's only one button. So there's a button on, if it's facing you, it's on the right side, or it's on the left side if it's facing away from you. Now, you press and hold for three seconds, and it's dead. The poor guy died. Okay. And the first thing, depending on your GoPro, you will need to change the bracket for a session or you just tighten up with thumb screws. And so there's an extra piece here, this collar. This is what allows it to be balanced with different cameras. You just loosen it lefty loosey, and then you can slide this to the either either way okay now why would you need to do this because what to balance it all you need to do after you tighten the screws is to just make sure that it doesn't flop side to side so i'm just going to push this over here and that's all the balancing you need to do and then when you you're about right about there just lock it in by righty tighty and now, da, 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 we're ready to turn it on. So press and hold that button for three seconds and it turns on. There we go. Now, now when it's on, the default mode is pan and lock, which means it won't look up or down. It always goes upright, but you can pan left or right and it slowly moves those directions. Now, if I press twice on the button, then what it will do, it will pan. And then if I look down, it'll look down. If I look up, it'll look up. So this is called the pan and tilt mode. If I press three times on the button, it will flip around and it will take me selfie. That's very cool, right? And then if I wanna switch it back, just one, two, three, and it switches back. I should note that the button is a little bit hard to press, but I understand that it is waterproof, so they had to seal that properly, so not really a complaint. Now, four presses is when we get into that new mode, which is called the auto rotation mode. And this auto rotation mode would come in handy if you want to do like a time lapse. And to do a time lapse on a GoPro Hero 5 or Hero 5 session, all you do is press and hold that button if your defaults are right and press and hold it for three seconds to turn it on and to start a time lapse, okay? So how this mode works on the gimbal, you press it four times the button and it gives you that beep. And what that beep means is that you can now set your first position, okay? So to set that position, all you do is grab your GoPro, not hard, but then you just grab it. Let's say I wanna start down here, okay? And then, I, and then once it figures that out where I want that, you let go, okay? And now it stays there, but now I press the button once. And that's my first position, A, okay? Now I choose my ending position, my B position, so I can move this, and let's say I wanna end it up and to the other side, okay? I stay here until it stays by itself, sit, ubu, sit. And then I press the button one more time, and then it will start at your first A position and slowly over time end up at your B position. And this can all be controlled via the app how long it takes, and that really depends on how many shots per second you'll be taking. I think the default for GoPro is 0.5 images per second, although I prefer to change that to one image per second. Um, anyways, so now it's going to be very slow, but by the time we maybe end this review, it'll end up a little bit more over this way and looking up. So it's a really slow auto pan. And then the last thing, five button presses reinitializes the beast, okay? So not very hard to understand. Now, let's go over some of the pros while this thing thinks about how it's moving so slow. One thing, of course, it's waterproof. Huh? Yes, thank you. Now, the one thing they do put on their website and they've added this since I first got uh, got interested in this unit is that it's waterproof to about the iPhone 7 standard. So it's not something that you want to leave at the bottom of your swimming pool for days and days, but it can be submerged, which is great. Now, build quality, amazing. It feels like it's literally a couple generations ahead of the last one. 
And also, I love that you don't need tools to change out or tighten the Session or the GoPro Hero 5, okay? Now, the other thing is that it's very compatible with different cameras, which I also love. So I hopefully, in the next generation, that I won't need to buy another gimbal. It'll still fit. That's awesome. And also, the app is really easy to use. If you want to remote control this baby, then it's very simple. Just fire up the app. It auto-connects, and you can go... Piece of cake. Now, the other thing is that the micro USB charging, this is going to be a pro and a con. The previous generation ran on CR123 rechargeables that they included, or you could also buy just lithium CR123 batteries if you wanted to get more runtime. So the micro USB charging is kind of a plus because one, they're ubiquitous, and two, you can also hook this up to a battery when we're actually shooting. You can use the gimbal while it's charging via a USB battery pack. But I should note the battery part, battery port, sorry, is over here. And when you open that port to charge, obviously it is no longer waterproof, okay? Because that is your USB charging port right there and it will be exposed to the elements when it is charging. Cool. Now, the other thing is I love just the size and form factor of this sucker. Like it is so tiny. I mean, the session is already tiny and obviously it's going to add more bulk than the session itself. But look at this thing. It's like three quarters of a pound. It includes your GoPro. It includes a three motor gimbal. Come on. What else can we ask for? Right. And also I love the actual footage that I'm getting from it. And that's ultimately what really matters. The last generation, I was willing to live with it because of the footage. And I ended up returning it because of the other build quality issues. But really, I really regretted returning it because I missed the footage. I was shooting with my, my GoPro afterwards just by hand and on a monopod. And I wasn't having half as much fun. I really missed being able to freehand my GoPro and getting usable, watchable footage. And that's really what this thing is about. Now, not everything is roses. Rob Galbraith, good to have you here. I so respect you. You are fel fellow Calgarian. And um, anyways, I'm totally thrown off by you. All these fame, like, I so respect all these people. Here. Okay, okay, now keep on going. Keep on going. Now, cons. Not everything is perfect in La La Land, okay? Now, the big thing is the narrow USB charging port. And one of the things that I had to do, uh, I used just the anchor USB cables, and I will recommend a hack. And I've, again, I've got links down below. But the USB, as it comes out of the box, these anchor cables are too fat. They're too fat to get into this USB charging port. So if you took really carefully, I took a knife, and I shaved <laughs> just the end here so that it would fit, okay? So now I just shove it in and it just barely fits. So, you know, I can't really fault Fayotech for that because I know they don't want to make a huge opening for the micro USB port or else that would compromise the waterproofness, right? So, but I should make you aware that if you do buy the micro USB cables that I have linked below that you will have to shave just a little bit so that it does fit. But well worth it because I'm going to show you how I hook this all up so that I can get pretty much unlimited runtime when you're running off battery packs. Okay, cool. Now, the other thing that I don't like and I kind of like is the built-in battery versus the CR123s. Like on one hand, you know, built-in is great because everybody has USB chargers, pretty easy to use. But on the other hand, you know, it's not as usable as being able to just throw fresh batteries in all the time. But what's it got to do? Da -da -da -da. We all have these, right? Ubiquitous, yeah? Just battery packs with two ports. Cool. All right. Take a look at this. Now, I just have this magic trick. Okay. And I've got links to all this, this junk because you know how junky I am. Okay. Oh, I should talk about, wait, the, th the third problem I found here first is the battery port, uh, the battery door on the session is obscured by this frame that holds the session in place. Now, why is this a problem? I'm going to turn this off so I don't break it. Okay. Blop. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to open the door. Hello. Let me out. Let me out. And so, yeah. And so, you know, it doesn't work because this little bar here is in the way of the battery door. Ah! So it's so silly. And I'm almost tempted to take a Dremel 
and just shave literally two millimeters or one millimeter out of this frame so that I can open the battery door without removing or loosening these screws. So little tiny pet peeve, and I know this is talking about, you know, this is pretty anal, but now I have to loosen those screws before I can open the door. Like thankfully the door also pops off, so ugh, if you're not in a waterproof situation where you need it to be water fast, I'm just gonna tighten this again. This is how I recommend running it. And if you need more juice, this is the way to do it. So I have a anchor cable, okay? The anchor cable, this is just the micro USB cable, but da, 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 this is the special piece and I've got links down below. It's just a micro USB to USB-C adapter and you will require USB-C if you have a Session Hero 5 or a Hero 5 to charge. So plug that sucker in, okay? And again, we've already got the second cable hooked up to the gimbal itself all right so now all we need to do is plug both cables into our battery pack and note the hero 5 is a bit of a battery drainer and so if you have two ports one powerful one less powerful i found at least for me that mine requires the more powerful port to work okay so i'm going to plug these both in and then if you really wanted to, you could mount this. I have a larger battery pack that I did put a GoPro mount onto so I could last for days and days and days. And now I turn it on and you'll notice there's a red light, which means it's charging as well as, uh, I think my GoPro is fully charged. So there's no charging going on there. Oh, <laughs> sadness. Okay, but da, da 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 And now I can turn this on and we can use this as a gimbal with a battery pack. And again, if I was gonna actually use this, I would probably, you know, mount your actual GoPro to your battery pack. But now you could battery, you could charge this and use this for hours and hours and hours because the battery isn't that huge inside the Hero and inside the gimbal itself. So really nice to be able to do that. Okay, now the other thing that I am gonna complain about just a little bit ah, is the roll angle, okay? Because the roll angle, which is the side to side, it still hits itself. So bang, it hit, and then bang, it hit. And yeah, they put the rubber pads there, but what if they just raise this up a little bit higher? Then it could have unlimited roll as well. And I'm not sure if there's a limitation on that because you need wires from the motors and stuff, but the other two axes has unlimited 360 roll or pan and tilt. So maybe they could do this as well. But um, yeah, I digress. That's just one little pet peeve. Okay, quirks and questionables. Now, they claim that this is waterproof, right? And it is waterproof, but there are all these warnings inside the manual as well as online not to use this in salt water. Now, salt water is still water. And so I was kind of surprised at this when I read the manual and I said, don't put in salt water. And if you do, wash with, wash with fresh water right away and submerge for like seven minutes or something or three minutes, there you go. And so... The salt obviously will corrode things, and I knew that, but I mean, they have like advertising on people on surfboards and stuff, right? And so it's kind of like, well, shouldn't it be okay in salt water? So if you're into salt water sports, just make sure that you understand that this isn't meant to be submerged in salt water. And if you do get it splashed and stuff, that make sure that you do wash it properly in fresh water right away, because you don't want those salt crystals ruining your motors, okay? Now, that's kind of like, a weird thing but besides that um it's amazing yeah it's really incredible and so um i carry this thing everywhere like it fits in my day bag and because it's so tiny it really doesn't take up much room much weight and i'm I can shoot pretty much anything without anybody really staring at me. Like the session lacks an LCD, so there's no worry about me having to frame things perfectly and I can just hold it and walk around and really capture the moment and really be in the moment more than if I had a camera to my face or even a point and shoot. I'm looking at the back of the screen, okay? So some of you have seen this before, but here's another little video that we took in Banff at the NHL traveling 100 years. How you doing, guys? Good, good morning. Good morning.
So all of that was taken with this tiny little GoPro on this little gimbal. And I do have a little stick that I was using, a monopod stick. I've got links all that as well in the article that I've written. But yeah, it's amazing the footage we can get with something so tiny and so usable too. And it's way more fun to edit footage that's watchable than not. And so what's the final verdict? You know what? If you own a GoPro or action camera that fits, just get this thing. This thing is incredible. Incredible. Um, I know some of the reviews really trash talk it, but I don't know why. I'm not sure if they were duds that came out, but definitely buy it from a, a, a reseller like Amazon who is willing to take it back if you get a dud. But honestly, I haven't recalibrated it once. Um, I haven't really found, like the, the horizons even on the water weren't perfect, perfect. Um, so you might need to have to adjust that afterwards. But honestly, that happens with every gimbal I have, including my $1,000 gimbals. So as far as the usability, if you are a GoPro user or action cam user, this is one of my favorite accessories ever. And because we're looking at taking video and not just stills, if you're wanting to get cinematic, buttery smooth footage and not worry about water and dust and all that jazz, this is the beast to get. So. That's it. That is my review. So I'm going to look at the comments right now and there might not be much because I think everybody's asleep. But if they're not asleep, I want to make sure that I address your concerns. Um, and what else do we have? Ha ha, sit, ubu, sit. Yeah, you're right. I talk to my I talk to my machines. Is that bad? And then Joel asks, can it fit an iPhone with the right bracket mount? No, it cannot. They do make other gimbals specifically for iPhones. And so I would recommend checking them out at Feotech. I've got links um, to their, oh, I should put, I'll add links to their website directly. Um, but they do have a pretty decent looking iPhone one. They used to be all metal, but to bring the price down and to bring the portability up, they've made it out of plastic bodies now, but they still look like they have a pretty awesome gimbal as well. So that's about all I have for you guys today. And I did have a thought of the day before we leave. And that is this. It's my experience that people rise to the level of their own expectations and of the competition they seek out. As someone who has been told I have high expectations of those around me, I also have those high expectations of myself. And I don't mind saying if I'm going to get into a project like media, that I want to create media that can compete with maybe media houses that are more than just one person. <laughs> and, you know, I think for my kids, sometimes they need to temper my expectations but um, this isn't a bad thing as long as it doesn't become obsessive and that we're not entirely driven on the results. But yeah, um, high expectations, great expectations. That's what it's about, man. So that is all I have for today. I wanted to thank you guys for being here. Share this with those that you think might be interested. Thank you, Teresa, for telling Omar about it. Yeah. And um, if you guys want to see more of the stuff, hit me up in the comments. I will look at these afterwards as well. Oh, I just got a comment on YouTube that I will look at as well after I close up here. And I will also, ah, tomorrow. Make sure to tune in tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time or 12 p.m. Eastern Time when I have my special guest. It's Alexa Diane. And that's her Twitter handle. Check her out. All right. She is awesome. And I'm so happy to have her on the show. So I've got a question. Uh, that's it for now. I'll sign off for now. And I'll get to the comments right now. Okay.